The crossings are the legacy of ancestors vexed by obstacles we face even now. For New England is a region creased with countless streams, creeks, brooks, and big rivers like the Connecticut. Waterways could obstruct the Vermont farmer trying to cart produce to market, the New Hampshire doctor on an emergency call, or the young student in Massachusetts whose school was one town over. In cities like Bangor, Hartford, and Springfield, a river not bridged threatened America's transition from agricultural society to industrial nation. The covered bridge was critical to uh, their livelihoods. When you lose a bridge, there's not mu much option to get around to the other side. And, uh, you know, it could stymie commerce and, and how we live and how you move goods and products. These were very practical structures. They weren't made, at least the ones that have survived, most of them were not made to be beautiful objects. They were made to be practical structures, as indeed they have shown over the past 150 years. Today, covered bridges have become less a means of travel and more of a travel destination. Their allure undoubtedly lies in an almost magical ability to span both time and space, and to take us on that journey. From Maine to Rhode Island, the surviving structures offer an amazing passage into a golden age of American woodworking. Before the Iron Age of America, there was this wooden age. There's not just a work ethic, but a concern for good work in that age that's worth contemplating. They had their pride and their distinctive belief in making something lasting. It wasn't this, make it good enough to last till the next generation of stuff comes out. None of that mentality. You made it to last. That's just how you did it. During the 19th and early part of the 20th centuries, New England was home to nearly 1,000 covered bridges. There are fewer than 200 of the spans now. As serenely as they stand, make no mistake, New England's remaining covered bridges are warriors, embattled survivors of Mother Nature, and modern man. The quality of the workmanship that goes in, that went into them, which has survived technological change uh, way beyond anything that anyone envisioned at the time. You know, school buses, <laughs> town dump trucks full of gravel, uh, milk trucks. Nobody, you know, all they had was horses. <laughs> These bridges are started up. Uh, and yet they've survived. The covered bridges of New England stand as a testament to engineering, hard work, and a certain Yankee tendency of stubborn frugality, as in, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 